Unemployment rates for young people are higher than the national average. Hunger, poverty, and homelessness are some of the other challenges that many face in our country today. And for the next few minutes, we'll discuss a bipartisan campaign that seeks to benefit these populations and the entire nation. Hello and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly. And joining me is Aaron Finucan, the Managing Director for Movement Building at Service Year Alliance. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So when we talk about this whole idea that there just are not opportunities for young people, this is where your organization steps in. But I want to talk a little bit about um, this whole idea of year of service and what that means if somebody actually takes it on. Yeah, by a year of service we mean voluntary programs like AmeriCorps, the Peace Corps, and Youth Build where young people step forward, serve their country for a year in return for a modest living stipend and often an education award that they can put towards higher education or their student loans if they're if they're finished. But it's a tremendous opportunity for young people to develop leadership skills, real life work experience, all while going on a great adventure and serving their community and their country. So at this point, how many opportunities are available and then how many opportunities are, are needed in terms of the people that you see that have the time and the opportunity to take part? That's a great question. So we have 65,000 national service positions today. We're turning away 80% of applicants. And our research shows that up to 5 million young Americans would step forward and serve their country for a year if given the opportunity. So it's a real moment of crisis, but also opportunity. So people want to do it. That's not the issue. The issue, I guess, comes in with, with the money in order to pay them. Uh, though a modest stipend, the money has to be there. And I think that that's what you're saying, that you would like those gaps to be filled financially. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, the thing about service is it is a tremendous investment. For every dollar that we spend on national service programs, we see about a $4 return. And we're not just talking about everyday volunteerism. We're talking about young people that spend a year on the front lines of our most overcrowded schools, our underserved health clinics, and our, our, our communities that are suffering from poverty and disaster. So the small living stipend pales in in comparison to what we spend on a teenager who drops out of school or on a patient who can't get the medical attention they need or the billions of dollars that we spend on relief efforts every year. And what type of work do you think you get from someone who does this type of service versus someone who doesn't? After they are done with the service and enter into the more traditional workforce, what type of person are they? Oh, I, I think it's a tremendously powerful experience. You know, we're on the road right now with our, our Service Nation 2016 campaign, which um, is a campaign to make national service a key issue in the 2016 election. And I can't go to a town hall or a campaign event in my Service Nation t-shirt without being approached by dozens of people that are ready to share their stories of service, whether that's through civilian service or military service. People are transformed as a result. So, you know, we're calling on all the presidential candidates to um, expand national service and to make a year of service a common opportunity for every young American. And I understand that you have people on the campaign trail who are making their voices heard, um, people who have graduated, so to speak, from the program um, and are sharing their stories with, with politicians and people in their circles. What's that been like? It's been fantastic. We've had a great response on the, on the campaign trail. And national service has the benefit of being a truly bipartisan issue from Bush 41 to Clinton to Bush 43 to President Obama. They all took steps to expand national service during their presidencies. But one of the big challenges for us politically is moving national service from the nice to have category to the essential category. And we do that a couple of ways. One is by showing that this is an issue voters care about. And when they go to the polling booths, they're going to be thinking about national service and where the candidates are on that issue. And we also do that through education and showing the candidates the tremendous impact that these programs have on the ground. Um, and every candidate that we've engaged, you know, they, they get it. And we're starting to hear them talk about it more and more, whether mm. it's national service and college affordability or the tremendous impact that AmeriCorps members had in, in lowering illiteracy levels in their state. Um, so it's, it's really exciting. We've still got some work to do, um, but we're making progress. And I'm just curious, you mentioned all the applicants you have. Is there a certain area that they're more interested in than the next in terms of where they want to be placed? It's, it, it's a really a wide variety, everything from national parks to our schools to health centers, um, of course, disaster relief efforts. So it's, it's, um, there's a variety of opportunities I think that young people are interested in. All right. Well, interesting topic. Thank you so much for giving us an update on what you're doing there out in the field. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.
And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly.